Hi everybody, Sean Rice here. Just want to show you something I discovered um, when I was setting up my Arteria Mini Lab Mark II uh, to actually kind of um, function with the buttons. I was really disappointed that originally uh, out of the box I can't control whether the buttons are on or off. But um, as you can see here, and I'll show you on the device as well, I can toggle these buttons um, and I can control their colors using uh, this, um, using the tools inside uh, main stage. So I also have control over the tempo, which uh, was kind of a big deal here. I've uh, set up the tap tempo here, so I'm going to tap this and make it go a bit slower. And you can see that it's adjusted the tempo. Let's make it go fast. So now it's going a lot faster. So it all kind of, um, and that'll map to the regular um, main stage tempo controls, which is pretty neat. Anyway, let me show you uh, how the system works, and then I'll get into how to get it running for you. So here's something that you can set up. Uh, I've set up a few buttons here in this concert, and you can, and I've connected them already to the uh, to my uh, hardware buttons. So let's set this button up. It hasn't been mapped to a parameter yet, so uh, I'm going to select the Control Arteria uh, Mark II here so I actually have that set up as a channel strip here so this doesn't actually do anything except process the MIDI commands going to the the device which is what controls the colors there so anyway let's go uh, select that one I'm gonna select scripter which is the uh, basically the pass-through tool for this and I'm gonna select pad 4 color because this is one two three four all right and that gives me some options over here on the parameters so we have the save value as black. I can set this to any color I want. Um, you can see that it's changing the color over there on the keyboard to match, which is pretty neat. Black is effectively off, so um, I can set white, you know, etc. So I can also set what the on value is, which could be, let's say it's green, and let's say the off value is black. Uh, Sometimes it takes a minute to kind of get that going, but that's actually effectively what, what happens. Uh, the reason for this is I can show you. Um, if I go to standard, I can see what the parameters are. You can see that these are the, the parameters that I've selected in there, um, and it kind of sends a different value depending on what, the, uh, what, um, what we've selected here. So doesn't really matter, but you kind of need to fiddle with this a little bit until it gets to match what you want. Button on being black or button off being, um, basically you want to make sure it does what you want over here. It looks like it's doing the opposite right now. So let's keep going. We're going to set the button on to green and button off to black. There we go. And you'll want to set the saved color to something that makes sense. All right. So now you can see that it's toggling. You can, again, you can have it switch between two different colors like I've got over here. I've got it switching between red and blue, or yellow and blue, and uh, kind of neat. And um, actually, if I wanted to, I can set any of these as a, uh, a tempo marker. So let me show you how to do that. So over in Scripter, this is where you actually see all of the different values here. So if I want to set, uh, let's say I wanted to set pad 5 as a metronome. So I'll set that to five as a metronome and I'll set the metronome color to magenta. And you can see pad five is also flashing at the same time as the uh, pad eight, which is, um, you know, it's all, it all kind of works that way. So you can kind of control toggle, however that makes sense. So um, next up, I'll show you how to install all of this uh, and that'll be, yeah. So next up, I'll show you how to install all of this stuff for you. All right, so to get this going, first off, you're going to need to go to ctrlr.org and download the latest version of Controller. This is basically the way that we're passing through uh, MIDI data over into the uh, the MIDI lab. So it's um, it's open source, it's free. Uh, one of the nice things about it. So you just go over here and you download the correct version for your uh, system. So for me, that I'm going to look for the DMG file. That's this one right here. That's for the uh, for my Mac, uh, you may have a different version, but you know, find the one that makes the most sense for your architecture. If you need help looking for that, um, definitely check out the forums here and figure kind of figure it out. Um, anyway, that's the the way to get to CTRLR. So what you're going to do is once you get CTRLR going, 
or once you download it, you're going to open it. And let's see here. Um, so here's the, here's what you wind up unzipping here. Uh, let's look at all of the other windows that I've got for this one. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take CTLR, rlr.component, and you're going to drag it um, into library, audio, plugins, components. You can see it right there. You might need to open it from here. You might need to enter in your password because this is usually like a password protected thing um, just to gain access. So you're going to right click on it and click open, which will do this. Um, it doesn't really, it'll give you like an open, like, do you really want to open this type of thing? Um, in any case, that should should just work after that. You could open it with the terminal uh, and then it'll give you it won't do anything, but it'll give you the alert, which will allow you to set it to be um, set it to be executable, which is what you need when you go into main stage. So once you've got that done, you can open up main stage and then we're going to create a new channel strip here. Uh, you can use the settings that I've already uh, I've, I've got in the repo. Uh, just download that file and then you can open up. Uh, from settings here. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go to um, add channel strip and then we're going to select software instrument. You don't have to have anything for input or output. Um, just create it. So now we've got a nice, a nice empty software. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to add a MIDI effects channel for, for this called scripter. And then you can, um, you can load the scripter script from my um, that I've sent. It's not this one. This is the same one. Uh, that's that PST file. So once you open up scripter, you can um, see you can see all the settings in there. Or if you wanted to copy and paste that JavaScript from the repo into here, it'll do literally the same thing. Now that's not going to be enough for you. You actually need to set up the controller instance here as well. Okay. So now that we've got scripter loaded here, we're going to go into our input. And this actually isn't an input, but it does, it is an instrument. So it's CTRLR AU. We're going to hit mono. You're going to, you might see it down here in AU instruments instigator, this one, and I'm going to hit mono. It doesn't really matter if it's mono or stereo. We're just going to hit mono. And now that gives us this empty panel here. So this is where you'll need to load the, uh, the panel. So we're going to open the panel that we've got. That one is, um, if you look, uh, I'm just going to fast forward to my repo. If you look in the repo, wherever you installed it, you can um, go to the CTLR, uh, CTRLR panel here. Um, you can recreate it using this Lewis script if you want, or you can just do the quick thing and load one of these. This one's a little bit smaller. They basically do the same thing. This one's just the compressed version. So I'm going to open that. There it all is. You can see all of the information and everything here. So Scripter needs to be set up to listen to the um, the channel four here, which is what we're doing, and we need to output to the device Arturia Mini Lab. There we go. So set up MIDI, go to device Arturia Mini Lab. That's what you'll need to do in order to get it working. So that's what you'll need to make sure that it works. Um, you want to set this MIDI channel uh, to four or whatever number you want it to be, but make sure that our, that uh, that this is listening on the same channel. See how we have channel four, channel four here. That way, they're, you're limiting the noise on all the channels you're not using. You can use any channel you want to. I've just defied, defaulted it to four because it's not generally like in use. Alrighty. Well, uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Feel free to download my uh, download the the all the files that you'll need for this. Good luck. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching.